What's happening guys? So we've just arrived back from Las Vegas. We are back in Invergordon after competing in the Deadlift World Championships and the USA Championships for Giants Live. So we're going to walk you through how each event went and our reactions at the end. So event number one was the much anticipated the Deadlift World Record, the Max Deadlift. So I personally, I wanted to go in and pull 425. Um, it didn't happen for me in the day. I don't know. It, it was a weird one for me. I didn't feel quite switched on. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just one of those things. But hit a nice 400 kilo deadlift, which is always nice in a competition. Um, getting some points on the board. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, when when you set your sights on something you don't get, it, it was always disappointment. Of course it is. Um, but I still got some points on the board, which was good. Um, Big Tommy, what about you? Uh, that was a failure. Um, yeah, my deadlift hasn't improved. I'm, you know, I need to just be honest and brutal with myself. I'm one of the worst deadlifters for max in in strongman right now. Um, 2019, I hit 400 kg at the deadlift championships, and four years later, five years later, whatever, I took 400 kg again. So yeah, there's big things to look at. But yeah, I just wasn't switched on. I didn't really know what happened. My deadlift has been down big time since. Uh, since uh, two, about a year and a half, two years. Um, yeah, so I'm just not confident with it, but it's what it is. Went in, pulled a 400 kg deadlift, and yeah, worst possible start of the competition I could have possibly hoped. I think, let's let's look at your deadlift. Like, let's have a quick look at Tom's deadlift. So, at Britain's Strongest Man, how many reps at 400 did you pull? Five. Five, which is massive. Like, that's one of the biggest reps for 400. Shaw Classic last year, you pulled on the... Brian set up the hammer tire deadlift, you won that. Then at World Strongest Man this year, you did really well there. So I don't think it's me personally looking at it, like critiquing you. I, I would critique Tom, but I think your deadlift is is where it, it, it's where it is at this moment in time. I would say over the last year, year and a half, you've been up there consistently winning deadlifts, tying with people. With I've, always, I've always been up there with reps, but it's always max. That's where... That's where, at the end of the day, you know, like, that's for me, Giants Live. You know, you can you can hide a lot in Giants Live when you do, like, reps with axons and a suit on because you put a suit on, you rely on a suit most of the season. And I can jump a suit on and rep 350 for 8 to 10 reps without prep. But then when you go to a competition that requires max staff, no suits, and, rep and uh, yeah, max weight, I am one of the worst at, at deadlifts for, for max weight. For reps, I can keep up with anybody in the world. The exact same with... You know, lob press for reps, all those kind of rep things. But when it comes to max, I'm not there, so I need to relook at that and uh, just see, see, you know, see what I can do to make that make a difference. So that could be a mindset thing as well. That could be something just. I, I have had, I, you know, I've had this, I've energy in March, and it's just, yeah, since then I just can't seem to deadlift raw for some odd reason, and it's just frustrating. But it's one of them things. It, it, it will eventually click again. I know that, you know, when I was in like Dubai, a good all those years ago, I was. One of the strongest raw deadlifters ever, but now it's just yeah, it's just one of those things I need to just collect. But the thing is, it costs with the deadlift with my max deadlift right now. I'll never win a competition with my max deadlift being like this, and that's the thing I need to look at. You know, if it's, if it's Arnold, if it's Rogue, if I'm pulling only four thirty, four forty, six people in front of me pull four fifty plus, and you just can't win a competition being at that low. And it's the same as you know this deadlift championships. I needed to pull four fifty plus to to even have a chance of even winning, and that's the reality of it. You can't. There's no beating around the bush of it. It's just I have to get better at deadlifting. And if I get better at max deadlifts, I'll win competition. So I have to change. You know, if if my deadlift doesn't go up for Rogue, then we're you know we're in big big trouble for Rogue as well as for for that event anyway. So I'll be fine. I think you know this is this is just a reaction straight after. So we're we're thinking things, and I think you know in the next few days that's the beauty of being able to kind of look back at things and see things uh, from a different light. You know, as the days go on. I think you'll be a bit kinder to yourself and think, well, actually, this is maybe the reason why this happened, this is the reason why that happened. I still think you're one of the best deadlifters out there. I think you've proven it over the last year, two years, that your deadlift is exceptional. And I think you'll you'll go on to that. And I think once you realise that, and again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, whatever, but I just see it from what I see from you. The more you, you know, you're training, you you're, you start training again, for Rogue, you'll be fine. It's just need, needing to change that mindset, get back to knowing that you're you're there, thereabouts. You can't just pull four, five reps at 400 
and be one of the worst deadlifters for Max. I don't think that makes sense, personally speaking. But anyway, that's our review and our performance. Tom's not happy. I'm not overly happy with it, but I still got some points which, you know, go back to three years ago for me. I wouldn't be pulling 400 in a competition. So I guess I've, you know, there's there's a. I believe that I can go and I can finish last in an event. I'm still good enough to go on, and <clears throat> I come back and be podium challenging to get on podium. Um, and that's what I can approve myself. I think the standout for me this year at the Deadlift Championships was Trey Mitchell. He pulled 475, 470 kilos raw without a deadlift suit, which is incredible. Trey has come back from a full rupture in his, in his Achilles at the Rogue Invitational last year. And to see him back and pulling 470 odd kilos, which is the heaviest raw deadlift that's ever been pulled, which is insane. I think that is, is you know, a huge shout to Trey. Um, it was really good to see, personally speaking. I thought that was class. Um, you know, the guy's going for 505. It didn't happen this year. Uh, I think, you know, again, when we're looking at a max lift of, of deadlifts, we, we want in the optimum conditions. You know, so for the European guys going over to America, um, it's really not optimum because of the time difference, etc., etc. This might sound like excuses, but... Again, when someone's trying to pull 505 kilos, which is the heaviest weight that's ever been pulled, um, everything has to be optimum. So, you know, Hicks, he was going over. Unfortunately, you know, he didn't get it. Rauner didn't get it. Uh, Ivan didn't get it. You know, unfortunately, that's just one of those things. But um, I, think, uh, I think the guy that was closest to get it was Mitchell Hooper, and he didn't even prep for it. And I think it proves, you know, if you're American and Canadian and there's a World Deadlift Championship in America... It's going to be more of likely an American or a Canadian will get it. And I think, you know, it proves that Eddie Hall, you know, although it's a massive lift, it was in England. He didn't have to travel or nothing. And, you know, when Americans and Europeans come over to this, I mean, it's harder. Same with Halfway, you know, if some people count it, some people don't. But it's still, it was in Iceland when he did it. So, you know, the deadlift, the deadlift records that have been broken have been in the home countries of the person that's actually be beating it. So it is a tough tough thing to do going out to a different country, especially like Las Vegas, you know, like, I mean, <laughs> the, like for me, the hotel and stuff, it was just, you walk in, it's just casinos, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, there's not really anywhere to chill and stuff as well. But anyway, Hixie wanted it, Ivan wanted it, Rowan wanted it, and you know, unfortunately didn't get it, but you know, it was a shock to see Mitchell Hooper even being the closest to it. And that just proves that, you know, when you're in a country like America, it's, it's just, I think it's just uh, for Europeans and British guys to try a deadlift record at that out there, it's, I think it's basically impossible to do. So, I think, yeah, and, and again, I just wanted to go back to Mitch, you know, no one really put him in the 505 contention, um, which, you know, looking back at it, he's pulled 470 kilos before, he's one of the best deadlifters out there, certainly for Max and for Rex as well, so um, I love the way that Mitch just went out, he just wanted to go and try it, you know, it was like, I'm here, may as well do it, I want to put on a show for the, the fans here, so... Um, really, I want to take my hat off to Mitch for that. I think it was a fantastic effort and yeah, huge well done on the, yeah another awesome performance in, in the deadlift event. Um, and yeah, it was just one of those things. You know, it's um, I think the only guy at the moment probably that could break it anywhere in the world is probably Half Thor. You know, I think it's still very hard. Obviously, Thor still would have to train for it, but I think Half Thor's got that ability to come in and um, come out to the states and do that and 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 do whatever he wants really with deadlift, but. Yeah, with that being said, that was the first first event, so that was the Deadlift World Championships over. Um, so unfortunately, we didn't see a 505, which, you know, I think, you know, our heads were telling us that we wouldn't see it, but our hearts were saying that we really wanted to see it, especially Graham Hicks. But um, yeah, so going on to the next event, uh, event number two, which was the car walk. So it was just over a thousand pound um, for 60 feet, I think it was, car walk. Um, your back was kind of spasming by yeah, this felt, uh, I'd just go first, this fence felt like hell. I picked up and felt like my whole spine was crashing. I felt like two, three thousand kilograms instead of what I thought would, would, it would feel like. So yeah, I was, uh, I was, yeah, my body was just kind of bruised and battered by then. Mentally I was gone, physically I was done. So I just kind of like, I just couldn't, you know, if I kept going, it would have made me mentally more worse. It would have physically made me more worse as well. And I would have just kept, yeah, I would have just, probably lost, you know, lost the plot for a bit and you know, I was kind of get going, flipping out a wee bit backstage as well and like, you know, I, I don't, I'm not an athlete to do that, to charade and all that kind of stuff as well. So I just was like, I'm, 
need to end it here. You know, I think in the future now as well, it need to I need to protect myself instead of just saying like yes to competitions now as well. And that's that's what I'm going to be doing in 2025 because there's a like there's only one athlete in the world right now that can do every competition every week and and win, and that's Mitchell. But I think every other athlete is on the same pedestal that. If you do too many competitions, you get injured. You like, look at Evan Singleton as well. You know, his well stored man pro performance unbelievable. And then since then, he's died off because too many competitions. So you know, that's another thing just to look back as well and take away from this year, the last few years is let's protect myself now instead of protecting anybody else and other people. And let's see what 2025 holds for myself. So that's where my competition bowed out. That's where it ended for me, unfortunately. But you know, we're going to see how the end of this year goes but my focus now is on 2025 and getting myself back into full recovery and back into doing the competitions that I want to do and, and the choice that I have instead of anybody else makes for me so mm. okay yeah so for me personally you know the car I, my warm-ups went really well I warmed up to 405 in the the yoke um I was doing longer runs um with the warm-ups which I think helped quite a lot so um obviously Tom and I were up against each other I knew Tom was struggling, I could see him warming up and, you know, he was um, a little bit kind of, you know, battered and bruised and stuff. And, you know, it's hard to see that when, you know, you know, number one, he's my baby brother, so I just want him to be okay. And I think Tom made the right decision. I think carrying on in a competition when things are kind of off, you know, we can feel how our bodies are, you know, only, only us can feel how our bodies are. And, you know, running with a thousand kilo, a thousand pound yoke, pulling 400 kilo deadlift, that does a lot of damage to our bodies. Um, and it's really sore, it's really painful. So I think, Tom, you know, you did that right for you. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to carry on. This, this, For me, this competition was a test to see how my body's adapted to to the recovery, the rehab prep that I've done. Um, I'm really proud of myself for putting in all the work over the last kind of couple of months and, and keeping my head. And, you know, this event, the car walk, it went pretty well for me. Um, I had a little drop, as I normally do, in the car walks, but, you know, I finished off strong and I think I got third or fourth place in this one. So it was a relatively good performance for me. I was pretty happy. Um, I think Hooper won this with, like, a 10-second run or something, I think. Um, but a lot of the guys were struggling with this one. It's The car is quite narrow. It's quite a, a, a narrow... Um, fit I found so I, I had to kind of use my, my my forearms to hold I couldn't hold the the kind of uprights because it's too much pressure on my bicep so um, that was something I learned from World Strongest Man but yeah it was a relatively good performance so that was the event to the car walk obviously unfortunately Tom had to pull out by this point so um, yeah my body was feeling good I felt really you know up for it I was excited for the dumbbell I knew dumbbell had gone really well um, so event three was a dumbbell, it's 100, 100 kilos for reps in 60 seconds. Um, so I, I was second last group up, I think, in this one with Trey. Um, and, you know, we had the privilege of, like, watching um, the guys. And the lockouts were getting held for quite a long time, so Maggie and, and Dave, the two referees, were really making sure that um, they were under control and we were looking at the referee and... So I knew that, so <clears throat> I knew I just had to kind of keep to the pace I was doing. I had six reps in, in training with 100 kilos quite comfortably. So I knew I had six reps in me. I, that's like, I could maybe hit seven if I pushed that a little bit, but just with the lockouts being a little bit longer, um, I wanted to hit that six reps. There was a group of guys on five reps. So six reps, I think, got me third place, um, which was I was really happy with. Trey and Mitch got seven reps and then I was kind of um, third place with, with six reps. So that was a really good performance for me. Really happy with that one. Um, bicep was feeling good. Um, so yeah, that was event number three. So then we go on to the wrecking ball hold, which um, this is a tough one. I, I went into it quite excited about the wrecking ball hold, but um, yeah, it's just a tough, really tough event and it's it's amazing how holding on to some holding on to something like that can really batter your body. Like my upper back was in bits, and um, you know you seen. I don't know if you watched it, Tom, but Alexei Novikov hitting the two minute barrier um, with that, which was incredible to see. Alexei just looked like he was in a controlled, like different state. He was in a different dimension when he was holding on to it, and um, he came away with a win. Um, I don't know. I was I was finished. 
I don't know, towards the bottom in this. I think it was second or third from bottom in this one, um, which was a bit frustrating. I wanted to do a little bit better, get a few extra points in this one. But um, again, <clears throat> these type of events are, yeah, there's they're something that, you know, maybe just got to try and um, train a little bit more for. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is with that one. Maybe it's the position. But yeah, I just found it pretty difficult in this one. Training had gone quite well for it, but such is, such is life in this one, unfortunately. Don't know if you had any thoughts on that one. Uh, on anyone? Recky Bowie, yeah, I mean, uh, Nick, uh, Novikov was unbelievable. I think it's a... Uh, yeah, I don't think it's a great thing, in all honesty, with you. Like, you can see, it's just... You have to catch it into your... Um, Hands as well, but I think it's also important you need to train it heavy in like training stuff as well because you have to suffer. I think, uh, you know, if you're not if you're only training like say 100, 100, 150, 160, you know, any athlete in the world can hold that for a minute, half, two minutes. But I think it's all just about suffering, isn't it? And like, like Luke said, you don't suffer with your grip, you suffer with everything apart from your grip. And it's you know, a deadlift take out of your yeah, dumbbell, do but this is the event that. I, mean, I think Alexei Novikov actually pulled out after this event mm. and, uh, well, he got a world record out of it, but it also sacrificed the rest of his competition for him. So was it worth it to go that long? You know, it, it, again, it's it's a hard one to judge because this is the thing that, yeah, can just eat, eat, out, eat out every single bit of energy you have and sometimes it is impossible to recover from it. So, mm. so actually, so yeah, that's a good point. So that was the four events done. So by the fifth event, we had quite a few pullouts. So... So yourself and Evan, um, but this time Alexi had pulled out as well. Um, Iron Bibby um, decided to pull out of us, didn't do the stones. Um, and I don't know if there was anyone. That was it, yeah. So um, I just wanted to go back to the deadlift as well. Big Andre Tex Mex himself, um, when he was going for 470, unbelievable. His feet kind of came away from him and he fell back. And like I remember watching it backstage, and he decked it, and he landed flat. Fortunately, he was okay. But oh my goodness, it was like, yeah, a big shout out to Big Andre, um, great athlete as well, fantastic deadlifter, um, really smashed it. So um, yeah, but this time it was quite a few pullouts. Everyone was kind of feeling the, yeah, just feeling it, I guess. And um, oh, one more shout as well. Sorry, I forgot. Big Eddie Williams. What about Eddie pulling four two five? like a 30 kilo PB for big Eddie Williams. Absolutely smashed it. Fantastic. You could tell Eddie, Eddie Williams came in in shape. I was, I think in the, the, the pre-chat that we did, I was putting Eddie as, as a podium favourite. Um, and yeah, he, he was really performing really well. Um, so going on to event number five, which is the Castle Stones, Atlas Stones. Um, there were new stones made for the competition. Um, and yeah, I was out first uh, with Matt Rag. Um, yeah, I was wanting to obviously complete the, the stone run. Um, managed to get the 180 up, you know, okay. And then 200 slipped a little bit, got up into my lap. And then I just couldn't complete the the finishing movement, you know, the, the, the second part of the movement, which was a bit frustrating. But, um, you know, a lot of the guys, a lot of us, we were all struggling. I think it was just Trey and Mitch that completed the stones, I think. Um which, yeah, again, it, it kind of it always comes down to that. If you're first and second battling out for the, the win, you're going to really be pumped up. And um, and it usually comes down to that, you know, it's, that's who does the best performance. And um, the Stones were fine, though. I, I thought the Stones were okay. Um, I just wanted to, again, just prove to myself, like, my bicep could handle it, and, and uh, it did really well. You know, I had a couple of attempts in the 200. There was no issues with my bicep. Um, and you put in a decent performance. It wasn't a bad performance in the Stones. Just would have been nice to... And I think if I had actually done the 200, I might have changed... I don't know if it changed the, the winner off it, but it was um, certainly a, a two-horse race with the win and um, Mitchell versus Trey. Actually, Mitch kind of messed up. I think he got stuck to the first stone. Like, so he couldn't let go of it. You know, when he one motioned up, it wouldn't come off. And like I thought, geez, I was thinking... What's he doing? And then, fortunately for 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 Mitch, you know, he, he kind of came back. He completed the two hundred stone um, run, and and that was enough for the win. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was good. Um, you know, that was the, the event kind of recap. I think um, 
you know, there was a few pullouts and stuff, and that, that's kind of a testament to the, the heaviness and the, the amount of competitions as well, I think, comes, as Tom said at the start, you know, the amount of competitions that are in a season now, it kind of, it is going to wear you out. You know, the last one, uh, there was Birmingham Giants Live, but before that was the Shaw Classic, and that was exceptionally heavy. So, you know, doing all these heavy comps, it's, very, it's all very well for people to say, we want to have the heaviest competition and do this and that, and but, like, as Tom says, you have to be able to pick those events then to suit if you're going to have really heavy competitions. You can't be doing 10 competitions a year. You know, that's just not possible because your body's just going to, like, crumble. Um, and, you know, what we want in the sport, me personally, is that longevity of athletes. We want to see athletes have, you know, like Tom and I, competing for 10-plus years and being able to carry on and, and not ruining their bodies. And um, I think, yeah, being smart with what competitions you do, you have to do that, of course. Um, but yeah, so that was the events. Five events done. Podium, we had Mitchell Hooper, who is a phenomenon at the moment, keeps winning, keeps smashing it, so fair play again for Mitch. Happy birthday to you as well. He just turned 29, which is unreal. I thought he was about 40, same age as me. But um, yeah, still only 29, and yeah, proving that he's... Um, just a, a a real special talent at the moment and you know, huge shout out to him. Trey Mitchell, absolutely impressed. I was so impressed with Trey this time. Mm. So happy for him to come back and um, get that second place. I think Trey was fantastic. Really, really kind of, you know, just, just putting the work in and, and nice, really nice to see him kind of coming back from that huge injury. And uh, Mr. Eddie Williams uh, in third place, which was pretty cool to see Eddie. Um, I think Koosh was, was videoing um, Hannah, uh, Eddie's wife, and Hannah was in tears. I was really happy for Eddie because Eddie and I had that stone off at, at uh, World's Strongest Man this year and it was really tough going up against Eddie. So for Eddie to make podium um, in this show was, was huge. You know, coming all the way over from Australia. Um, and yeah, huge shout out to Eddie. So really happy for him. So I think I'll talk a little bit about my performance and my thoughts on my myself um so as i've said i went into this competition as uh like two or three weeks ago i wasn't sure if i was able going to if i was even going to do it um but really happy i did because it proved to me that my body is recovering really well i can come into a heavy competition um and you know hold my own you know um beat some of the guys that beat me at world's strongest man um you know, switch it on when I have to. There, there is still some work to do for me, but um, I'm kind of similar to what Tom was saying about 2025. You know, I've said 2024 is for me a. It's almost like a, a reset here. You know, the new coaching, the new way I'm training. I think I'm coming in a lot more athletic. I'm. I feel leaner. I feel more fit with with the events. I didn't ever feel that, like, I was gassed out um, in this event, which was really good. So. My fitness is there, my strength is there, um, and I'm really excited just to carry on and um, see what kind of shape I can get into for Glasgow and the Rogue Invitational. I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic and positive. I've taken a lot of positives from this competition, and um, you're yeah, getting top five. Yeah, it's good, but I want a podium, of course. Um, but yeah, that's what I'll be coming in in the Glasgow's to um, come in to try and win the show. Um, and, and you get onto that podium. So that's my plan. I feel very confident. My training's gone well. Um, I'm going to get back training today. I've got a, a deload or a reload session today, so I'm going to get back into the gym and keep that positivity. That's what we need, Big Tommy. Positive mental attitude. That's what we want. Because we are the stop man. Isn't that right, Big Chap? Let's hear from you then. Come on, let's see. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, there's some posit positivity yeah, from me. I think you have to also be, I, I want to be honest and open as well because, you know, me being well strong as man, I need to take accountability in myself and I think I need to, you know, since well, since well strong as man every single year, after well strong as man every single year, my performances go down and, you know, I think it's just me. I think it's just, I take the foot off the gas. I think because I'm the well strong as man, that I'm kind of, I don't need to work as hard. And, you know, yeah, people can call me well strong as man, blah, 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 but, you know, I'm trying to take the mindset now that I'm pretending not even have those titles anymore because you know, every single time after Worlds, my performances go from, you know, top three, you know, winning Britain's top three Arnold's, blah, 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 to 
the only kind of good one I do have is maybe Glasgow and Rogue. And yeah, like the last two for me ha hasn't been has been way below par. Shaw Classic, yeah, take away the stones, I should still be up there trying to win the competition. And then this, you know, coming to Vegas, I should have been going there. Even if I'm like ninety percent, ninety five percent, I know that I should still be good enough to go on podium. And that's not taken away from any other athlete. I know when, when I'm confident and when I'm in that kind of right zone, I, but I have to be in that right zone all the time. And that's a difference right now with, you know, Mitchell Hoopers and all those kind of stuff. They, Mitchell Hooper could turn up tomorrow and, or the rest of this week and win every single competition he does. Whereas me, I win one and, and or I'll win one and maybe not win another one for 30, 40 weeks. Yeah, so, you no, know, I mean, Vegas, I was going there like confident, but then as I was out there, I was just getting more like less caught. I, I was trying to eat food and I just felt pretty flat. Even the training before, the food before, everything kind of just for me, I don't really know what it is. I don't know if it's my body's kind of not responding well to the training, like I've already touched on in Shaw, but also then, you know, I need to go look at the diet as well. Is my body not responding to the diet? You know, out in America, I'd, I think also the mindset for me, I stepped on the scales in America and I was like 174 kilograms. And in my head, I was like, what the hell is that? Because well, you weren't 174 kilos. Yeah, I was. That was a 387 pounds. You were 390 pounds. Yeah, it was 175 kilos. So what is Yeah. I googled it straight after too. I was like, "Fuck it, nervous." So, but Google it right now, just quickly. It's about one hundred and seventy-six kilos. Yeah, so what three, did I say? Three ninety. Three ninety. Good chat. One seven six kilograms. All right, so what about that? Yeah. So that. So then, when I weighed myself, there, I was kind of like, I know it's a stupid thing to do, but in my mind, I was kind of like, "Jeez, oh, all the food and stuff I've been doing is not in my it's not working." And usually, when I go to America. I'm the opposite, I usually turn into a monster. So that's, yeah, there was just things like that. So yeah, I'm taking away, you know, I'm trying to be optimistic and positive going, you know, forward. Obviously, the last two competitions, you know, it's, it's with everybody at, the, at this level, at the level I try and persuade myself at, you know, being the world's strongest man, I need to take in better consistency and a better level into competitions. And the last two, you know, if you take it out, the last two I've done, I don't deserve to be world's strongest man. So I'm going to try and go, to Glasgow the best I can, you know, realistically my eyes are on Rogue and uh, Glasgow's, you know, two weeks away and the kind of, the niggleys I've got, the mindset right now and my body, it's, it's, I'm not, like, I'm not optimistic to now, but, I, you know, that will change after me, hopefully a few days of just recovery and trying to see where I am, but, yeah, Rogue's a big one for me, so, um, Glasgow I'm going to make a decision on as well, I'll see what happens, I don't want to just be going to Glasgow again and end up two events and um, my mindset's gone because one, I can't be bothered doing that anymore. Two, I'm not here to kind of make people happy. I'm here now for me and it's really affected me. Like the last two competitions I've done affected me bigger than, more than I thought. Um, you know, I can put blame on other people and teams and blah, 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 but it's also me as well. And yeah, I don't know what it is. You know, I've tried my best to try to get mentally good. I tried to, I've, you know, I talked to sports psychologists as well, but it just, I don't I don't really know why it's fallen to pieces, but that's something that I'm going to correct, and that's what, why 2025, that I can say it now is I will be doing four competition max 100%. There's not going to be doing any more competitions. No one's going to make me do any more competitions. I'm can kick and control of, you know, the way I coach myself, the way I'm going to eat, the way I go to these competitions now is if I go to these competitions 100% and do these four competitions the best of my ability, and I'll feel so much happier, positive, and... And that's a, that's kind of what I want to do. You know, I want to be going into competitions positive and leaving competitions positive. Not, I should be doing this, that, and that. But that's that's uh, the thing for me. Overall, obviously, the deadlift championship wasn't good for me. But yeah, unfortunately, I pulled out. I don't want to be doing this exact same. Obviously, in my hometown uh, place in Glasgow. So the decision of that will come in the next few days. Whether I, I know that I can challenge Mitchell to win it, or if I'm going to be just one of those guys that are going to be going down there and not being able to win it because you know I'm the reigning champion down there and that's you know that's the decision I'll make and then obviously like Luke said the biggest focus for me and Luke I think is rogue. I think we need to come in there hundred percent. We need to come in there all guns blading and I think it's the best chance for my best result and Luke's best result at Rogue. This could be the only time it's in Glasgow uh, in Aberdeen so if we don't make the most of it and not hundred percent then there's it's gonna be like a waste of time. So that's my biggest kind of goal this year is to get 100% and then focusing on that one competition instead of two so we'll see what happens but I will do a video and if you know I'm going to be at Glasgow regardless but it's just I just want to get out there just in case you know and that's where I am mentally that's where I am physically and we'll see what happens eh? so 
that is the deadlift world championships talked about so it is done we're moving on so there is some light at the end of the tunnel that's that's what we're trying to say you know although you know tom had to pull out we're feeling good for 2025 i think we're both on that same kind of journey that same path in 2025 that's going to be a big year um you know that's that's the beauty of kind of big that's the beauty of looking into the future you know we can plan things we can we can do everything we can and um you know hold ourselves accountable 100 percent and um you know when we come together and we train together when we do things together i think things go a lot better. I think that's what we've proven over the, the, the last kind of couple of years is when we're training together, we have that motivation with each other. I think that's that's a really big thing. Right guys, that is a deadlift review done. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Well done to Luke. Not so well done for me, but uh, I'll be back with a, a doubt. Vengeance. Vengeance. Sorry, I'll be back with a vengeance soon. Uh, yeah, we'll do another video later on in the year talking about 2025 plans, how we have to look after each other, but also ourselves and how we have to take kind of responsibility going forward as well. So stay tuned to that. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, smile, and stay spicy. And please don't stop ringing that little bell. Ding -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling.